Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flatirons Tuning Question of the Week. This week our question comes from Simon in Australia who asks, which is better to upgrade first, cams, valves, or both? It's a good question. It is actually a hard question to answer, sort of. Um, before we even go into that, I, we should talk about just what they do. So when you're talking about an aftermarket camshaft or an aftermarket valve, so the aftermarket cams, you're, you're what you're generally doing is you're increasing the lift, how, how high the valve is open every time the, the cam loop comes around, and then the duration. So how long is the cam going to hold the valve open for before it pulls it shut? In terms of an oversized valve, it's just a physically larger head on the valve, but there's some machine work in the head that is required to put it in. But the idea is you have a physically larger valve, so you have a, a larger opening, and then the, the head is opened up behind it, so you've got basically a, a wider opening for the air to get in and get by the valve to get into the cylinder so that you can use it to make power. So when would I need to upgrade either of those things? Um, really, you know, as far as when you would do this, uh, when you would want to upgrade these, it's it's when you're trying to optimize that upper RPM, upper RPM power. And, and in talking about this, um, we realized that we had two cars that are a perfect example about what, what the difference that cams can and oversized valves can make. One of them happens to be your car, which is your WRX that uh, you just put on a new turbo, the RCM 400, which is based on the TurboDynamics MDX 400, 2.5 liter engine running E85, um, and you, you have stage 2 cams, a 272 cam, and oversized valves. Um, in our Pikes Peak car, also 2.5 liter engine, also running E85, but stock valves, stock cams, we're running the next size up turbo, the MDX 450. So. Um, stock cams and stock valves and one step bigger turbo comparing the two cars power bands so your car with the bigger cams bigger valves and the smaller turbo is making 375 foot pounds of torque at 4900 rpms and 408 horsepower at 6500 rpms so the Pikes Peak car is making 460 foot pounds of torque at 4300 rpms so almost 100 foot pounds more torque at 600 rpms sooner than your car also worth mentioning, both cars have a front mount intercooler, so the intercooler is, is comparable between the two as well. Uh, the Pikes Peak car is making 420 horsepower, so just a little bit more power, but at 5,700 RPMs. So our peak power is coming on 800 RPMs sooner than yours, but it's, and it's just slightly more. So that tells part of the story. The other part of it, when you look at the dyno sheets, is that because we have the stock cams and the stock valves, our torque curve falls off very quickly. We hit our peak power, and but then it, it falls off. Like we're we're not getting, we would not get as much of a benefit from like shifting at redline versus you. And, and your redline is higher. Your redline is 7,500 uh, RPMs, and our redline is 7,000 RPMs. But yours, your torque curve is much flatter. You you get much more of a benefit for revving the engine out. You're kind of climbing and building power almost all the way to to redline to the point where you would shift. Um, so it would seem like your car might benefit from a bigger turbo but you had a bigger turbo. So, so yeah. that, the reason you picked the smaller turbo that you did is because you're trying to gain back some of that mid-range power um, that seemed to be lacking. Tell everybody at home what it was like or what you were running before you put on this uh, RCM 400. So the previous turbo was much larger and peak power was lower, 350 peak horsepower, 290 peak torque. And that didn't come on until about 5,800 RPM. So about almost 6,000 RPMs before it really felt like the car was up and moving. It's it, it seems like it should work because you have the big cam, the big valves, and the big turbo, but you were just you probably just didn't have enough velocity to really get everything up and running to, to make use of a reasonable power uh, to have a reasonable power band, even shifting at 7,500. I would have needed to rev to about 9,000 to use that power, though. It, it's the same problem that we ran into with the Pikes Peak car at the beginning when we were running the Dom 3 Twin Scroll. Um, that twin scroll and turbo had such a big exhaust housing we just did not have enough back pressure we weren't moving enough volume uh, of exhaust gas through the engine to get the turbo to spool up so we're in, we were waiting until about like 6,000 rpms for it to come on and we could only get it to make 18 pounds and so we were limited about 370 horsepower that's as much as we could possibly get out of that turbo because we just couldn't couldn't spool it up we couldn't make use of it so you know, it's, it's, it is tricky to know what you're going to need when, but uh, you definitely want the turbo and the cams and the valves all to work together, um, if at all possible. 
So I did the upgrade, big cams and vacant valves. You guys haven't done either. Which would you recommend doing first? I preface this by saying if you have a street car, if you're gonna spend most of the time driving your car at a normal RPM range, which for a turbo Subaru is say between 2,500 and 4,000 RPMs, the stock cams and stock valves are probably your best bet in that range. Um, if you're gonna do one, I would say you'd wanna look at doing an aftermarket cam first because an aftermarket cam that's going to increase the lift, incre increase the duration, you can get a good, a good benefit for that even with the stock valves. And, and it, it's still gonna move the, your peak power and your peak torque further up in the RPM range, but, but there can definitely be a benefit for it. Whereas like an oversized valve, if you just have the stock cams without the extra lift, without the extra duration, I don't think you're gonna get much, if any, benefit for that oversized valve in that high RPM range, but it's still gonna hurt you down low. So I think like the oversized valves, I really can't see an application where it'd be beneficial to just do those. I would start definitely with a cam and then do the valves if you need it down the road. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for catching the question of the week. Remember, we do these every week and you can submit your questions through the comments below or message us on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it as always. And uh, until next time, stay tuned.